Nancy is a UCLA sophomore with a generic average pre-med application. Her impact is low, she has no clear themes, and medical schools have no idea who they're getting. The scariest part, she had no idea how not competitive she was. Just two quarters later, after working with us here at Pre-Med Catalyst, she now hosts dance programs for dancers with disability and attends weekly wheelchair basketball practices. She has intentionally, proactively built an application around the theme of disabled population and is starting to develop a cohesive application that truly stands out. Far too many pre-meds are clueless about how competitive they are. Today, I'll explain exactly how to figure out how to know if you're on the right track. And if you're not, explain five key factors that you need to know to grade your own competitiveness. Those are impact, cohesive narrative, number of hours, uniqueness, and longitudinal involvement. These are the same factors that adcoms use to determine if you get an acceptance or a rejection. Here is Nancy's resume when we first met. There is a huge problem here, specifically that this resume did not communicate Nancy's actual genuine interest. In fact, when you look at it, it doesn't really say anything about Betty, other than maybe she is in a bunch of different philanthropic sorority type organizations. This application does not convey future potential to a medical school who may be interested. One of the first things that we do for all the students we work with is we meet the person and compare it to the paper or the resume. And if I can look just at the application and it embodies everything that this person truly cares about, they are in a very good place. But more often than not, what happens is the resume speaks to someone who is completely different from the pre-med in person. And this person paper mismatch syndrome can be devastating to your admissions odds. Another test we use is called the distillation test, where we try to summarize this pre-med in one or two sentences. The framing goes like this. Oh yeah, Michael, that's the pre-med who was really engaged with Vietnamese and Hispanic communities, raising $12,000 to put on quarterly health fairs, serving hundreds of undocumented, uninsured, non-English speaking immigrants. Oh yeah, Steve, that's the pre-med who managed a computer system helping incarcerated people earn associate's degrees so that when their time was up, they could return to society with skills and job opportunities. You need to be able to distill down the essence of a pre-med, and if you cannot, that is a clear sign that your cohesive narrative, your impact, is just not quite there yet. If you wanna see more examples of actual successful applications, applications that have been accepted to UCLA, UCSF, UC San Diego, check out our application database. It's always free. It features eight full applications, personal statements, extracurriculars, GPAs, MCATs, everything you would ever want to see. All there for you to understand what it actually takes to get into these competitive medical schools. It's always free in the link in our bio in our application database. So now let's get very specific on how to actually figure out if you're on the right track. Number one, impact. Here, we're looking for quantitative data or some sort of qualitative evidence that shows that you you are actually having an impact in your extracurricular activities. For some extracurriculars like research, defining impact is easier. We'll look at the number of abstracts, the number of publications, the number of conferences attended. For certain positions like finance or fundraising directors, the number of dollars that you raise is an easy metric of success. But for other extracurricular activities, things can get kind of ambiguous or vague. At Pre-Med Catalyst, we break it into a three level system. Level one may be volunteering at a canned food drive drive once every couple of quarters. Level two is what I did as the finance director of Vietnamese Community Health, raising $12,400 to put on health fairs every single quarter for undocumented, uninsured, non-English speaking patients. And level three is just something extremely ambitious, like the LeBron James Foundation funding the I Promise School in Akron, Ohio. There are levels to this, and the higher you can ratchet up your impact, the stronger your application will inevitably be. Factor number two, cohesive narrative or theme. Many pre-meds start by joining 10 different clubs in 10 completely different fields. They are volunteering at a homeless kitchen, 
They are hosting dance classes for disabled athletes. They are doing research on plant photosynthesis. They are fundraising for leukemia cancer research. They scribe for an endocrinology clinic. They are doing a literature review on nutrition in society. And with whatever time is left, they host a book club once a month for the local elementary school. These pre-med students are spread too thin. They're involved in way too many things that are completely unrelated to each other, and every single thing has low amounts of impact. Medical schools have no idea who they're getting. Contrast this to someone who is well unbalanced or has a spike. There's a pre-med whose father had a heart attack in their 50s, and after that really scary episode, they saw their dad lose 30 pounds and get into the best shape of his life thereafter. They're going into medicine because they've seen personally the power of lifestyle preventative medicine. And so this pre-med does basic science research on hunger hormones in rats, trying to figure out if there's a genetic basis to hunger. They also work with the public health school to do some epidemiological research looking at food deserts in different zip codes in Southern California, implementing a program to help ship 20,000 pounds of fresh produce into these zip codes every single month. Their clinical experience is actually a partnership with Fitbit and is a randomized controlled trial study where patients get a 16 week intervention with a health coach and a Fitbit device to see how much weight they can lose sustainably. That is a pre-med who has one narrow niche, but has demonstrated exceptional levels of depth. Every year, over 50,000 pre-meds apply to medical school and over 60% don't get into a single one. If this video hasn't been completely trashed thus far, I highly encourage you to take a look at the free resources we have in our description box below. Click the link in the description box to find out more. And for now, let's go back to the video. Factor number three is your uniqueness. This is lower value than most pre-meds would think. Being unique for uniqueness's sake is not inherently valuable. For example, Khan Academy is not really unique. It's a teaching extracurricular activity. But if you were to start Khan Academy, the level of impact it has had on this world is so exceptional that that activity clearly stands out above the rest. On the flip side, something very unique like charcuterie boards would not be very impactful if all you did was make a charcuterie board once a year. There's no real impact there. It's an interesting hobby, but it's not much else to write home about. So don't chase uniqueness for uniqueness sake. You don't need to be an anthropology major just so that medical schools see something different. But if something is unique and impactful, for example, our friend Steve, who has managed a computer lab helping incarcerated people get their associate's degree so they can return to society with job opportunities, with skills, that is both unique and impactful and gets a little bit of a boost. Factor number four, the number of hours. The number of hours on the ladder of importance is far lower than most pre-meds think. There's a happy medium where more hours leads to more opportunities for leadership and impact, but pre-meds do get to a point where too many hours are spent on any one extracurricular activity. When you hit that two, three, four thousand hour range on most extracurricular activities, especially if it's scribing, being an EMT or medical assistant, things become repetitive and you aren't actually learning as much for each incremental hour you spend. So yes, while an activity with 400 hours is more likely to be impactful, an activity with 4,000 hours may not have that same linear trajectory. Factor number five, whether an activity is longitudinal. Again, this is a soft proxy for level of impact. The longer you are with an activity, the higher likelihood it has to be impactful. And building, whether it's a research project or a community health fair organization over three, four, five years, can certainly lead to much bigger projects. Those five factors, impact, cohesive narrative, uniqueness, number of hours, and continuous longitudinal activity are the five things that adcoms use to grade your application. You may have noticed that many of this is quite subjective. And so here at Pre-Med Catalyst, we have our own rough grading scales as well. It goes from zero to three, with level zero being a brand new pre-med, essentially a blank resume, hasn't started with a completely blank slate. Level one gets a competitiveness score of about 25, and these are the pre-meds with basic, generic extracurricular activities, no 
theme, no standout factor quite yet. Level two, a competitiveness score of about 50. These pre-meds have some sort of theme, but across the board, the impact is generic to average. And level three, correlating to a competitiveness score of about 75, these pre-meds have a narrative, they have deep impact within their narrative, and that is what stands out to their dream medical schools. So now we're going to revisit Nancy's application before she started working with us. You'll notice that on the two most important factors to grade a resume, Nancy's impact and Nancy's cohesive theme, both of them are quite low. She has a series of level one activities. Think kind of one-on-one -on -one tutoring for one student during the summer or volunteering at a canned food drive, maybe once every two quarters. Specifically, she's a secretary for a community service organization down in Long Beach, and she was a kindergarten teaching assistant for about a year early in college. Assuming that community service and teaching are actually the themes that she would be interested in, a level three activity for community service may, for example, be starting the I Promise School in Akron, Ohio, like the LeBron James Foundation did. For teaching, a way to increase her level of impact would be to start an organization on campus that staffs 12 preschools and kindergartens in the area and offer tutoring services that way. And of course, a level three activity would be something like being the head of a chapter of Khan Academy, perhaps being responsible for their organic chemistry teaching. As it turns out, community service and teaching were not her core passions. It, it really was working with populations with disabilities. In two months, her resume began to look like this instead. She works with an organization now that guides children with physical and developmental disabilities in various athletic activities and sports. She's a dance host, leading classes on Zoom for dancers with disabilities. She's the co-founder of a bioethics organization on campus, investigating stigmas and issues in modern medicine and modern healthcare today. And she's a member and active coach of the Wheelchair Basketball League at her local campus. Clinical experience wise, she's working with organizations to help screen for the deaf and hard of hearing. And all of these activities really started only in the two months since we identified what she really cares about and found activities that fit perfectly with those interests. You'll notice clear differences in depth. She's no longer a secretary taking meeting notes. She's at the front of the class guiding the entire group in a dance session. She's actively involved in what is now a very clear theme, working directly to screen and participate in different athletic activities with people with various disabilities. And because she has found organizations that she actually really does enjoy, any spare time really goes to those organizations and the number of hours and involvement grow accordingly. This is just a bonus, but we don't really find many pre-meds who work with disabled populations and the uniqueness score also increases to that end. She's just really started this panel of activities, so longitudinal involvement is still to be determined, but I can see how the impact will certainly grow in the next two or three years she'll be involved. Again, that's what we were able to accomplish in just two months. When you have a clear strategy and direction as to where you want your pre-med journey to go, finding the right extracurriculars, finding the right faculty members, physicians and professors to support you becomes all the more easier. This is exactly the crux of the Pre-Med Catalyst Mentorship Program, our flagship and fundamental product since the inception of the company. We help you take control of your pre-med journey, figure out your theme, and most importantly, provide you with a support system that helps you make the right decisions along the way. If this video was helpful at all, you may find the mentorship program even more helpful. Nancy, the subject of this very video is one of our fantastic pre-med mentees and we're very happy with how far she's come. And if you like this video, chances are you'll also like this video here where we review what adcoms say is the secret to standing out. We talk about this concept we call the passion flywheel and how to leverage the things you actually love into real extracurricular activities, real impact that your dream medical schools will notice. Thanks for your time today and I'll see you in that video.